welcome back to another <laughs> video. Thanks so much for tuning in. Yes. Do not have to ask. Have you looked in the mirror today and told yourself that you're beautiful? If not, <laughs> go ahead and do that and then come back back and we can get started. Yes. So as you guys can see, we have a very, very, very special <laughs> guest um, to wrap up our Melanin Men in Medicine yeah. series. And when this video drops, it'll be like our anniversary. Like we've been oh, on YouTube. Yeah. For years. <laughs> <laughs> like, almost like you, you are like, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we have Raheem. He is a official fourth year and he finished like basically all of med school, y'all. Basically. He's gonna flute out. Dude, <laughs> <getting> flute <laughs> out for <laughs> interviews. For <laughs> dermatology <laughs> of all things. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let him introduce himself. <laughs> I'm Raheem Turner. I'm a fourth year at UT Houston. Um, applying to dermatology. Been wanting to do it since I was like 15, 16. Wow. So I hopped on when I was real early. Mm -hmm. um, thankful to the deities that it, <laughs> that it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> and I matched next month. But yeah, y'all got flew so out all around the country. <laughs> okay. That should be the goal. You know, like, hikey. <laughs> so how did you know you went to dermatology yeah. at 15? I know. This is because I told her to an interview and she was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, you're forcing. Okay. Yeah, she was like, this sounds like a stretch. Yeah. But like, I come from a very small town, right? Like 8,000 people. And it's super racially divided, and the closest dermatologist is like two and a half hours away. And my mom was like mm -hmm. superwoman. She was working three jobs. There was no way that we could find a way to visit something like as minuscule that it seems as a mm -hmm. dermatologist mm -hmm. when she was already sick, going to see a primary care specialist in a whole other town. Yeah. And so I grew up like seeing the psychosocial effects of derm, and that's what mattered to me a lot is because mm -hmm. the anxiety and depression, you being a walking billboard. Um, of your disease mm -hmm. takes an impact on you and that sticks with you if you can't get it treated. That's real. So I think yeah. that the accessibility and the melanin in dermatology oh, is honey, lacking. You gotta protect the melanin, <laughs> right? It's lacking in some areas so we need to fix that. That's true. That's cool. mm -hmm. So do you think like long term you want to come out with like a skincare line or like? I think so. I think there is some simple things in derm that people neglect, right? Mm -hmm. So even just like you get a bump or you pop it and you have like darkness around it, mm -hmm. that's post inflammatory hyperpigmentation and for dark skin people, it takes so long for that to go away. Yeah. So, like, lighter skin people, they kind of get it and it fades because they can tan or the case may be. We just kind of walk around looking like we got polka dots, mm -hmm. like foundations, mm -hmm. and that's like super debilitating that's to true. people. Yes. Yeah, so, that's, that's like true. one of my main things trying to come out with some quality skincare products that will cater to melanin people yes. with pocket pigmentation. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true, though, because I have like some dark spots, yeah. and no matter what I do, like if I'm like consistent and I just put stuff on every single day, it, they don't go away. Yeah. And it's like, why? Like, I see this girl over here. I'm like, right? I'm like, she did the same thing. DIY. That'll yeah. work. Yeah. That'll yeah. work. That's so real. Work. But yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, can you give us like a little bit of background? Like, where'd you go to for undergrad and what'd you major in? Yeah. And then how'd you get into med school? So, uh, I went to Texas State University. Okay. You, know, you, know, you was like, you know, 50 minutes away. We were like, oh, uh, Austin. Right? And like, so yes. 35. <laughs> yes, all about 35. Mm -hmm. So, I went to Texas State University in San Marcos. Mm -hmm. I majored in microbiology and I minored in wow. bio. <laughs> and minor. I wish I would. I didn't even take I bio. I didn't even take bio. Bio. <laughs> bio. bio in college. I put this for way through my That was my stuff, though. That was my, that was my wow. journey. Wow. And I minored in. Psychology, sociology, and biochemistry. Oh. <laughs> Everybody calm down. Everybody calm down. Wait, wait. No, honest, wow. You have three minors. How do you, how do you, do how do you minor in biochemistry? You, like, you know? He came to stud, and that's all. The video's over. It's, it's over. This so I essentially like came into college as a sophomore though. So I had like mm -hmm. a, I had like dual credit, blah blah yeah. blah. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> right? I like so I came in as a sophomore and then I was in jam. So oh, if y'all yeah. haven't known about JAMP, JAMP is a joint admissions medical program. It is a special Texas program that accepts about 10% of applicants. Mm -hmm. um, like 1,500 people apply, like 100 people get in mm -hmm. roughly. So it's super competitive, but it's Amazing. a pathway from um, like 12 Texas colleges to all of the Texas med schools. Mm -hmm. So I had a guaranteed spot at a Texas med school yeah. from mm -hmm. being in this program. And they wouldn't let me graduate early. So I was supposed <laughs> to graduate. <laughs> A year ahead, mm -hmm. and they were like, nah, fam. So I had to pick up another minor okay, or another yeah. major. And I was going to double major in sociology, but they wanted to me like do like a, a language for a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And me yeah. and languages just don't work. <laughs> English. I, I can barely speak English. <laughs> That's about it. It was a wrap. Okay. It so worked did, out very well. Did you, I know you're super smart, oh, but okay. did you have like, any like 
struggles while you were pre med? Academically? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I, don't so. I don't really, I don't really know what that word means. <laughs> No, so academically, I think I was, I didn't have any like outside motivators like going through high school, mm-hmm. so I self taught myself mm-hmm. all of my stuff through high school because mm-hmm. Jasper is a like I said, super small Jasper. from good old Jasper, oh, yeah. Texas. Mm-hmm. So yes, Jasper yes. is <laughs> eight thousand people, yeah. super racially, um, explicitly racially divided, mm-hmm. and so there isn't help for like black kids in Jasper. Yeah. Um, even the school system is. Kind of racist. Yeah. Yeah. So I taught myself all throughout that, and then when I got into college, I was used to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like okay. crying, mm-hmm. especially through my dual credit classes. Mm-hmm. I had to teach myself, mm-hmm. so I was Real. good through college. Um, the hardest part about college, I guess, was like adjusting, which we all know, mm-hmm. like college can be an adjustment for people mm-hmm. from small towns, and I guess just like the social aspect of college and trying to find where you fit. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's kind of hard. And I was the president of a huge organization called Phi Sigma Pi. Mm-hmm. Um, we were a national cohort honor for changes, oh. and. Yeah, no. We were all like very professional, but we were all really good friends. Mm-hmm. And that was always a mess. So <laughs> <laughs> you can't be like they, they can never separate like yeah. Grandma Heen from like Grandma Heen. Mm-hmm. So it was always a mess. So that was my biggest struggle. <laughs> Conflict. That was my biggest struggle in college. Mm-hmm. All right. So now let's transition to med school. Okay. okay. So how was your, has, how has your medical experience been so far? Mm-hmm. Your medical school experience? It has been fun and interesting. So. Knowing that I wanted to do Durham, there was mm-hmm. always this like intense pressure for me to overachieve. Mm-hmm. And when you are that type of person, you have this type of expectation, and you're surrounded by all these brilliant people, I feel like you set yourself up to fail constantly because mm-hmm. whatever point you don't hit always makes you feel like you're less than. Mm, it's true. And that was like my struggle all of first and all of second year, even with step one. Um, my step one was good, but it wasn't like Durham good. So Durham is like average of a 250, and I'm very open about this because I think that <clears throat> especially like male-native individuals mm-hmm. become really, really um, scared mm-hmm. to Purdue competitive specialties because we're used to being comfortable in what we're doing. We're used to mm-hmm. being the breadwinner, so we don't want to fail when we apply to residency, yeah, okay. so nobody applies to ortho, Durham, Euro, mm-hmm. plastics, whatever the case may be. So Durham was like average of 250. <clears throat> And I had a high 230 as my step score. Mm-hmm. And I still ended up between interviews, like, you will be fine if that's what you want to do. Do not be discouraged. How many interviews? A t- <laughs> just 10. <laughs> just, just, just to make sure you guys get 10 <laughs> interviews. Okay. And the magic that. number for Durham is like eight for you to match. So, so he's going to match. <laughs> so, <laughs> <there's> no <laughs> <one that>. yeah. <laughs> so with the like hyper competitiveness and mm-hmm. the, like overachievement, I just felt like I was always less than. And mm-hmm. that, was, that was such a big struggle during. Um, First and second year, especially since like people always want to talk about grades, they oh, all got to. I don't want to hear about your grades. I don't care. And I'm like, girl, and <laughs> <laughs> I passed. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> so it was really a struggle in that aspect, mm-hmm. and it's just like my mom passed away when I was a first year. Mm-hmm. So the uh, the Saturday before we started our first week of finals. Oh, nah. Y'all had the old curriculum. We so had the old curriculum. Is. So we had a week full of tests. Mm-hmm. And so I just kind of had to package that up and deal with it in a few days and hop back into it because mm-hmm. we don't get special treatment. That's true. Um, we don't. I know. So that was a struggle too. And that's just like clearly I'm still dealing with that. Mm-hmm. And you kind of have to make do with what you got. Mm-hmm. And bad things happen. You just kind of have to roll with it. But mm-hmm. And I'm sure she's so proud. I like, hope so. I think, so that, I think she's working some magic. She sprinkled some of the interviews down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, come here. I thought you struggled a little bit. Go ahead. When I got some of them high tier interviews, I was like, hold up. Um, Mama, you did this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was the biggest struggle. Is I think it's just like the the expectation, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. First of all, I'm one of I think I'm the first black person to apply from UT Houston into dermatology in like the past like ten years, which is crazy. No. Ridiculous. Did you get support <clears throat> applying to Durham? Did you have that kind? Of, did you have to do it on your own because you didn't have anybody to look up to? Ooh, the question, the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real team. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> um, I think dermatology is one of those program is one of those specialties that it's super hard for you to find mentors mm-hmm. like real mentors mm-hmm. and so they always tell you to find one and then you go try to find one and that's not a it's never like a real mentorship of someone who's like trying to really really look out for you at least not not bashing UT I love y'all I mean it um I mean it <laughs> I didn't have the support that we needed to apply to such a competitive field yeah. mm-hmm. because there's so much politics that goes on with like hyper competitive specialties right mm-hmm. they're super small everybody talks 
nobody knows how to navigate through this. Mm-hmm. All we have is this, like, student doctor network spreadsheet that just stresses mm-hmm. everybody out. Mm-hmm. And you're getting advice from equally stressed out, like, fourth years. Yeah. Did you like research? Yes and no. So, like, real bench research, where we talk about molecules. Okay. And, like, <laughs> It's a, I hate it. I hate it's, a, it's a no for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I do like going to like get data from patients and mm-hmm. you know, see patients and mm-hmm. see clinical trials. It's cool. Yeah. It's also just exhausting. So and it's mm-hmm. definitely not for everybody. Even if you want to do Durham and or a hyper competitive specialty and you know you need research, mm-hmm. don't be discouraged by the fact that you have to do it. It's like taking step one. It's something that mm-hmm. you have to do. Um, and if you it's love it, that's great. We need mm-hmm. more people of color who are physician scientists. But you don't have to fall in love research with these girls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know what I have, my research interests are very specific, and yeah. when I get there, I'm going to do it. But mm-hmm. outside of that, it's probably going to be enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> how did you get the research project? So, how many research projects are, do you have? Or like? my CV, I think I had like 16. But so, this includes. <laughs> Wait, what? I thought he was about to say, like, you know, two, three. No, everybody. He says 16. I'm about to throw So, are these, like, <laughs> are these like, are these actually projects or like case reports? Like, yes. Oh, okay. So, I always tell people, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, hold <laughs> up. When y'all talk to dirt people, it's gonna always sound like we're doing like a lot. Because <laughs> we learn how to finesse the system. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like case reports, um, posters count as a research item. Um, so mm-hmm. if you do a case report and a poster, that's one thing that you wrote, but that's two things that you could do. Mm-hmm. Right? So this is like the politics of um, fourth year that you kind of figure out yeah. as you're going through. Um, what else counts on your stuff? Like, or presentation. So during some of your rotations, um, you're attending to be like, go present this, go do a PowerPoint and present this to us in two days. That's an oral presentation. If I'm about to go put in this yeah. work, <laughs> yeah, in front true. of these residents, mm-hmm. oh, Graham Brown, sure is. <laughs> <laughs> that goes on there too. So yeah. it's mm-hmm. keep tabs of the stuff that you do. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, so can you talk a little bit about interview season and like any tips that you can give to us? I know it's kind of far away from, for us, but we can always look back on this video and like get yes. some gems. <laughs> yes. So interview season. Who Lord. Are you broke? <laughs> Girl, that's an understatement. <laughs> so you will spend thousands of dollars on interviews. Mm-hmm. And just like, go, you start saving up now. Just <laughs> <laughs> a little penny Have here. Have an interview there. like savings account that you yeah. just put money into. So they do give you extra money. Um, but I can speak from someone who is socioeconomically disadvantaged. Mm-hmm. And I always have been. So like, like I said, my mom passed away. My dad is retired. I take care of like my sister with my loan money. Mm-hmm. And when you really think about it, um, I always say this, medicine is not meant for people who are socioeconomically disadvantaged. It's not. They do not mm-hmm. care if you don't have the money to live. They only care if you pass their test and graduate, right? Mm-hmm. So when you get accepted into a medical school, it's kind of like you become, some medical schools are way better than others, don't get me wrong. And UT does a good job at some, some of these aspects, but you kind of become a number, right? And so I got accepted into med school and I'm living off of like, however much loans you get like think about living up in minus tuition you live off that for a year it's crazy so roughly the max you can get is like forty three thousand dollars or something and then you pay twenty thousand dollars in tuition Mm -hmm. so then we're living people who are like broke broke and don't get outside assistance from like their parents or whatever the case may be you're living on twenty thousand dollars yeah that's me that's my life i feel you i feel you on the side and so when you get to interviews, it's going to be a particular struggle of mm-hmm. finding out how to budget your money for your rent, budget your money for whatever accessory bills that you pay, and then spending 300 plus dollars for flights mm-hmm. everywhere that you go. And especially mm-hmm. if you do end up doing um, one of the fields that you're talking about, like one of the um, lesser competitive fields, you're going to get a lot of interviews. Just yeah. being black women, mm-hmm. generally, like it's going to work out very well for both of y'all. And you have to think, take that in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be a lot of flights. So... Financial planning is very important when it comes to mm-hmm. residency interviews. Um, highly recommend getting a credit card if you don't have one already. I would just wait. Um, get like a Southwest or like a Safe mm-hmm. Chase Sapphire like card. Saying. They come in clutch. They give you 60,000, 50,000 points. That was like eight free flights. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, so one way is not, mm-hmm. not, um, not around trip. Yeah. So that's a big thing. Um, it depends on what specialty you go into and how many interviews you do, but you will spend thousands of dollars. Um, being away for so long and having to be on 100% all the time mm-hmm. is the most exhausting thing I've ever been through. <laughs> because from the, you wake up at like 5, you get ready, some of these interviews are at like 7-ish. Mm-hmm. And for dermatology, our interviews are all day. Mm-hmm. So we will have like 13 interviews that are like 10 to 15 minutes. Hold on. Girl. <laughs> what? 13? Yes. What are you talking about? So, the same thing. Like, you? Oh, like, you lying. That's, a, that's not everything. <laughs> you did this 
Yeah, Unless you're high. So during we call it speed dating. Okay. So some schools have like more interviews that are like eight minutes, and then some schools will be like the least amount of interviews that I had was seven, and those were like seventeen minutes, fifteen, seventeen minutes each. And you meet with every single faculty member. That's the whole point of oh, their okay. interviews. Got they make it. you interview almost with Got all the faculty it. members. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's exhausting. Yeah, <laughs> so you have to answer the same questions over and over again. You have a mm -hmm. script. Um, so when you got to look back at this video, I guess it's like financial planning. Mm -hmm. um, making sure that you have scripts for a certain answer. So mm -hmm. they're always going to ask you why you want to do the field that you want to go into. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But you they're kind of feel specific, so you'll get that kind of just yeah. when you get close to that. But having something that you can just like, they ask you, and you have like a thirty minute slot. I mean, a thirty second slot to answer it. You gotta have that down. It's kind of like the elevator, just like the elevator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's very, very real. Um, but they're fun though. Yeah. I would just recommend um, you, my friend who matched Harvard Durham. Shout out, like, yeah. <laughs> shout out to Excellent, Jay. honey. <laughs> she matched wow. Harvard Durham, honey, and she's gonna be. She's an intern now, and she's gonna be at Harvard Dermatology, the number one dermatology program in the nation. As a black woman. Can I be your friend? Wow. Hey, girl. <laughs> was, wow. Uh, That's she, amazing. Congratulations. I'm so proud of her. Oh, she wow. is like my dirty fear godmother. And, she, <laughs> and she, I called her and I was stressed out. And she was like, you're going to be broke anyway. You might as well go ahead and have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you're right. Mm -hmm. So try to use them as vacations, mm -hmm. man. You're going to be in these places for like one to two days, like mm -hmm. max. If it's somewhere you've never been, like take an extra day. If you don't have to go somewhere else and go enjoy that city. Because mm -hmm. you can and just talk to random people. Just have a good time. Because mm -hmm. it gives you a better sense of where you want to be. Yeah, Especially like for me, some of these cities I had never been to because I'm mm -hmm. poor, poor. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to go around, I'm going to go to bars, I'm going to go wherever, wherever, to pubs, I'm going to talk to random people, see what mm -hmm. the city is like. And Who I was your favorite place? Denver, Colorado. Really? Oh, Denver, girl, I'm strong. <laughs> oh, so happy. Oh, Denver, that was easy, that was easy, easy I love Denver. Oh, so Did you go in the wintertime, or was it like fall-ish when you went? No, so Durham only interviews in December and January. Oh, which was cool. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> Only those two months. Oh, yes. So keep wow. in mind, mind you, that we apply in September. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody else from September. They've been going. They, right. They, people were done when I was started. Mm, <laughs> wow. So I started in December and I had ten interviews from like December the fourth to like January the like nineteenth. Wow. Yeah. So in a month and a half, you had to do ten interviews. <laughs> I had to do ten interviews. Oh my gosh. Ten different schools. Ten different schools. Wow. <laughs> different ten different states. 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 He was getting states. schooled states. out. Okay. So that's another question. So, do any of these residency programs like provide you with any kind of funds, mm. financial assistance, if you need it? Yes, but <laughs> okay. not competitive specialties. Okay. Wow. So it's the most weird. Like what? We I, I we have the most money. <laughs> so like, why can't sense. I'm like help me? Yeah. <laughs> help. Help. <laughs> I don't understand. And wow. my friends in primary care, peds, internal medicine, mm -hmm. they were like legit getting flued out. So really? I was fooling my, I was fooling myself. <laughs> <laughs> they got flued out. All expenses paid. <laughs> I eat. For real, like I have a friend, a fourth year, um, currently shout out Kendra, um, got okay. flued out for real, for real. Like they mm -hmm. pay for her hotels, they pay for her flights, and she's family medicine, and they mm -hmm. do the same with peds. And I'm sure internal medicine too. So it's just when they, when there's more of an incentive for them to want to pull you in, mm -hmm. you get those benefits. Yeah. Derm is like, you need us, we don't need you. Yeah, <laughs> true. So we're up here, we're begging and mm -hmm. groveling. <laughs> if we stop, I'm sure they will pay, but that's not gonna happen because it's too competitive. Yeah. That's um, crazy. So yes, there is a lot of financial assistance, mm -hmm. and honestly, like. Take advantage of that. If y'all end up doing like uh, primary care specialties, take advantage of that because that's too clutch. Because wow. I wish. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine. That's, so crazy. Oh my God. that's just another obstacle. That's just mm -hmm. another stepping stone. Yeah. Did you meet any other like melanated people on your interview? Interview chat? Like, <laughs> You're like, oh I my did. God, I got a black It really be like that. Like, so, at my first like four ish interviews, there was always only one other person, or I was the only one. Okay. So it was like a struggle. And keep in mind, like, Durham programs are notorious too small for background. Um, they range from like two people being the smallest. Some even have one. So they'll interview like 20 people from one spot. Wow. Um, so some places have like two spots per year, and the highest that you'll see is seven. So the max that you'll be interviewing with per day is like 20 ish, and they might have like two days. Mm -hmm. um, 
So out of all those people, out of all these 20 people, there's yeah. like one or two black mm -hmm. people per day. Then I ended up going to a place <laughs> where it was like 28 black people. <laughs> you lying. But it was Howard, too. Oh, <laughs> We think that the new chair at Howard is mm -hmm. phenomenal. She is a phenomenal woman. And I think she made an effort to try to invite all of the black applicants. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that over 700 people applied to dermatology. Mm -hmm. And only 28 black applicants were at Howard. So there could have been people who just decided not to go because you can decline interviews. Mm -hmm. But still, there's not more yeah, than... There's out of the 750 you. plus people who applied... Yeah there's less than 30 people who ended up applying mm -hmm. like total. And you see the same people in rotation. Mm -hmm. And during that day, um, I don't know if there are any other black men who apply dermatologists here, please hit me up, like we need each other. <laughs> there was only two black men at Howard on the day. Keep me in mind, like she was supposed yeah. to invite all the black people, there was mm -hmm. only two black men. Wow. And the rest of black women, because y'all right. represent, y'all were talking. <laughs> um, but that's crazy. Yeah, that's insane. When I'm talking about the representation, like we don't have rep We're the 1% of dermatologists. Wow, 1%. Um, <sighs> One. Oh no. One. Since we're going into our third year, mm. what about advice for clerkships and like rotations? Ooh, I love it. Or your experience with that. Yeah. Third year is a whole different beast. And I tell people all the time, med school, you have to really want it and clearly y'all want it, y'all thriving. I'm so proud of y'all. Oh, it gets harder and then fourth year just like drops in it's super easy. <laughs> <laughs> It's the craziest thing ever. Like, first year, we think it's hard. Because it's all about perspective, right? Mm -hmm. First year, you're kind of new, and you don't know what's going on. They, they, it's curves. like a water hydrant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever, yeah. it's not a water hydrant. Um, it's impossible. It seems impossible. Then you get to second year, like, what was I tripping about? Right. Like, yeah. say, first year was a joke. Third year, you have to deal with the same amount of studying that you were doing for step one, essentially, because you do have step two, and you mm -hmm. have all of your boards. And you have to deal with, like, the microaggressions and societal pressures that you get from being in the hospital every day and the long hours like we were discussing mm -hmm. like 12 hour shifts and you have call and then you have to, you don't have time to study and function as an adult mm -hmm. so i think third year is the hardest year because you never become adjusted mm -hmm. you get used to a rotation in and six it weeks and then, it and then it ends and then you're <laughs> on to something new with somebody who could not be your favorite person yeah, you have to deal true. with that and deal with the bureaucracy and the politics because nothing will change mm -hmm. um, yeah no matter how much you complain or hoop and holler uh, med school is very medicine in general is very resistant to change and growth Mm -hmm. And there's a lot that we can do without in third year, mm -hmm. and it's just a cultural change mm -hmm. that is taking decades. Mm -hmm. to it's happen. so political. Oh girl, so political. <laughs> um, advice would be: I always tell people, you know yourself better than anybody will ever know you. Mm -hmm. Trust yes. yourself, and don't worry about what other people are doing. People are gonna be like, "Oh, I finished the U World for internal medicine eight times. I heard you gotta do that." <laughs> girl, I don't care. <laughs> Do your same with step one. It's mm -hmm. like because y'all haven't taken it yet, right? Mm -hmm. I am so pro trusting yourself. You know how you study. You know how you function. You know how you cope. Do not let people, but like bury you with all this advice. Yeah. And only take advice from people who you trust and who you function like. Yes. It's mm -hmm. so like I'm here and I'm a great. I think I'm a great representation for like succeeding in med school and doing competitive specialty, if you don't function like me, girl, my advice should not right. like, yeah. like take it with a grain of salt and be like, I like this one thing that he said another way yeah. for me, mm -hmm. but everything doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. And you have to keep that in mind while you're studying because I had so many friends who got bogged down by that mm -hmm. and it affects like you being able to function and being able to succeed. And that's yeah. the whole thing to do. Mental health is it's right. important. It's and so I think important. you should prioritize that Thank you for that segue <laughs> in third year because yeah. it takes such a toll on your mental health mm -hmm. and keep that support system that you have. Like if y'all are close with the rest of the people in your class mm -hmm. or if you're not, like just try to form some community to help you cope. Yeah. Because you won't be seeing the same people every day. Like sure. my best friends, me and my best friends were all in different streams. So we had to like make time to see each other. Yeah. And mm -hmm. It was like a priority because it's so stressful being black in a predominantly white space for so long out sure. of every day. Can we not used to do that right now? Yeah. I can yeah. just go study wherever I want to yes. study. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you have to kind of put on this, like, when we know, we're all, like, black people are legit magic. We have so many different personas and so many different aspects because we are chameleons and we know how to, we are multifaceted individuals. Sure. And we know how to blend and make it work for us. Um, That's true. We have our... So we know how to adapt. Yeah. Uh -huh. We have our, can you speak to your manager voice? Okay. And we have our... <laughs> hey, girl, what's up? <laughs> okay. Hey. We, we talk about so well. How's your dog? <laughs> Animals. I'm telling you, 
is. Thirty is a lot of smiling and nodding. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta practice that. <laughs> that has a lot. Um, oh my goodness. And then the biggest thing, like academics wise, um, y'all are gonna be good. Coming off of step one, like nothing's gonna be hard for you. Okay. Um, it's just keeping that motivation yeah. especially if you start with something difficult yeah. so i started with surgery because i wanted to because yeah. i knew i don't want to do surgery mm -hmm. so i was like let me go ahead and get this out of the way mm -hmm. and i came straight off from step one in surgery so nothing was new i was just tired yeah. so it's a year of being tired and <laughs> <laughs> i'm tired now i'm tired now. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> it's a whole year of being tired mm -hmm. um but it's a it'll work out um i just think that like trusting yourself um, if you have a faith or whatever you believe in, like have some rock of foundations where you can talk to and fall back on because mm -hmm. your patience and everything about you is going to be tried <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and have somebody that you can call and talk to about the foolishness that you're going to deal with on yeah. wards yeah. and the microaggressions. Mm -hmm. um, and then at some point, I always say that you learn what is important to you, right? Mm -hmm. For me, I think my mental health and my dignity is more important to me than me receiving an honors, right? Mm -hmm. What we not go do is you, <laughs> you not, I'm an adult, right? And so mm -hmm. I, I, I say this so often is that we need to stop talking to medical students like they're children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because before I got here, I was grown. Facts. And I'm still here and I'm grown. And, I'm still grown. and if you're an attending, anybody watching this as an attending, learn to respect your med students because before you talk to me as a student, you're gonna talk to me as an adult. Mm -hmm. And so towards the end of my third year, I had this mentality like, what we not gonna do is you're not gonna talk to me stupid. And if I made a mistake, we can talk about right. that as adults. Don't but we're not gonna, me. yo, no, not we're not gonna do that. Um, so you just kind of have to learn how to stick up for yourself professionally. Mm. And I'm a pro with that. I will pull any attending attendees aside with the swiftness and be like, why did you think that was okay? And because what's gonna, I don't know. So you have to kind of figure out. You gotta figure out. At first, it's scary. And yeah, because like, like, I can't believe they were doing it. But you're an adult at the end of the day yeah. and you learn how to handle your business for yourself yeah. and don't let people disrespect you. That's real. That's very true. Have you been thinking about a gym? My gym goes back to... Okay, I was like, wait, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, okay, got it. Okay, okay. All right, now you can go. My gym for medical school just in general mm -hmm. just really goes back to what I was saying in regards to their year. It's like trusting and believing in yourself. And you should become your own best friend before you get into med school mm -hmm. because it's going to try you and it's going to try your patience. It's going to try your will. It's going to try a lot. And I just think that believing yourself in that self-affirmation mm -hmm. um, is so important when you get into medicine. I think it's one of the biggest things is just knowing how you function. It is always a learning curve. You're always mm -hmm. going to be learning more about yourself because you are a dynamic individual. Okay. I love but that word. Just try to. That's a new one. I love that one. So just trust yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know you better than anybody else will ever know you, and believe in yourself, and you got this. Oh, let's go. And with that, I love that one. That was a good way to end this. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. So so this much for great. coming. Oh. Man, I wish we would have talked more. I know. Like, like, you know, you know, know, like, know. And now you're just gonna be making your dirty money and like just forgetting about the little people. Here we go. I got y'all. Both talks for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> So we will put his um, contact information in the info box if you guys have any questions for him. Um, of course, you know, he's busy. So make sure you know, keep it professional. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys for watching yeah, our video. Sense. Don't forget to like and comment, comment and share. Um, hopefully, you know, you enjoyed it mm -hmm. and you got some gems from him. Because yes, that was, was, it was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> I received it. I hope y'all saw that. You're going to have to maybe rewind <laughs> and watch it again so you can catch everything. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. We will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.